Welcome, everyone. Thank you so very much for being here. Uh, for those of you who are just joining in the chat area, I was asking, how are you feeling right now? So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead, just take 30 seconds right now to put into the chat field how you are feeling now in this moment. Check in with yourself. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Heather. Anxious. I also heard curious and burdened. Uh, we also heard excited, inspired. Oh, amazing. Another curious, fabulous. Keep them coming. Oh, in need of rest, Amy. Same, same. Overwhelm. There's so much good content at these events. <laughs> Hard to digest. Yes. Inspired. Interested. Oh, nice. Thank you for refining fine. Scatterbrain. Oh, tell me about it. Thank you, Andrew. These are great. Thank you so very much for these words. Um, I'd love to now take another 30 seconds to just hear from whoever would like to share about what their intentions are about being a part of this session, right? We have like an hour together. It's one o'clock, we just finished. You kind of look down and you're like, wow, I'm so glad we got to, what is it? What, what is your intention? Go ahead and put in the chat field what you'd like to get out of whatever you think mental fitness through play might be. Ooh, new mind powers. I love it. What else? What other intentions might you have for this session today? We've got an hour. After the hour is done, what would you like? Helping people explore themselves more deeply and how they can do that. Oh, nice, Heather. Resources. Inspiration for creating playful learning experiences. I oh, love that so much. Oh, we got some plus ones going on. I love it. How to design mindful gameplay experiences. Oh, thank you, Lauren. That's lovely. Engagement. Oh, these are great. I perform and teach improv, and I use that in my writing and creating immersive digital experiences. I want to see what you have to say about it. Oh, sweet. Designing play-based experiences for building balance, shifting perspective, being surprised, finding creativity, inspiration, healthy brain gameplay. Oh, my gosh. These are all so great. Okay. So let us dive in. Um, uh, seeing what you all said here, I'm going to take some of these words, and I'm going to do something called a cipher. So a cipher is... Uh, being informed by that which comes before you and also allowing yourself to be changed by that which comes after you over a beat. So my beat today is just going to be... All right. Yes, today we try to get elective. Why? Because it's good for us to shift perspectives. Being surprised by creativity. All right. How do we do it? What is the connectivity change in the gameplay that we got it going? All right. Yes. And how this mental prefrontal cortex keeps flowing. These are resources for you to dive in. All right, everybody, we can all thrive in. And how do we explore each other and ourselves more deeply? Deeply. How can we just do it? Reach me, reach you, listen so deeply. All right, let's dive into it creeping. All right, everybody, we're going to dive into this right now. So that's me taking the words that you had sent in the chat and just putting it into a little sort of what we call a fountain of freestyle. So let me share my screen with y'all so you can see some of these things visually as well. We know that there's lots of different style of learners out there. And it's important to be able to meet you where you are. So yes, I work with and started a company called FLS Plus, and I'm the creator of Freestyle Love Supreme. I also created another company called Speechless, and we have joined up to create this thing called FLS Plus. Now, FLS Plus, we did the how are you feeling today, we did the intentions, and I just did Foundations of Freestyle. But some of the people who are involved with Freestyle Love Supreme include people like Lynn manuel Miranda, Wayne Brady, Utkarsh Ambudkar, David Diggs, Chris Jackson. All of these people use, oh, I'm not in full screen. Oh, yes, sorry about that. Uh, all of these people employ something called improv thinking uh, to do mental fitness. And so today, I'd love to have these as our agreements. So first, surprise yourself. Second, make everyone look and feel great. 
Third, listen with curiosity, be present, however you need to do that. Follow the joy. And finally, take care of yourself. Whatever you need to do for you, I'm not going to judge. So we're going to do that by playing. So let's play. The first thing we're going to do is something called take five. So the way take five works is I'd love for you, if you are feeling up to it, now this is you taking care of yourself, to stand up. That might feel totally weird already, right? But go ahead and stand up if you are able to. And if you're not, just make sure you're sitting on your sit bones on the sort of front of your chair, so you're sort of as vertical as possible. Imagine there's like a thread being pulled from the top of your head and you are elongating your spine. So great. So we're gonna do something called take five. So in order to do this, I'd love to have some people populate the screen with me so you all can see what we are doing. So Adam, is it possible to bring up some people uh that might be in the room here um awesome so thank you adam uh we're gonna look for some i'm not sure how it works if it's just randomly assigned or if we get volunteers but we're here to break things so let's try to break this right now bring up 10 people with me and we're all going to do this together if you want to share you just hit share audio and video button in the top corner and when you do that you will be joining me on the screen because this isn't about me, it's about you. And the wisdom of the room is always much better than any one person. So whoever's ready, hit the share audio and video button if you're feeling up to it. And if you're not, get it, it's scary. It's gonna be uncomfortable, but that's life. Awesome, yeah, Heather's joining in, let's do this. Who else do we have? Yeah, nice, I love it, way to be brave. Everyone give it up for Heather, that's so great. Great, who else wants to join in? Come on, any other brave folks out there who are gonna hit the share audio and, and video? And again, it's okay if you don't, we got your back. We're gonna make you look and feel good, I promise. All right, Karen, coming in, let's do this. Yes, awesome. Okay, so keep joining in whenever you feel like you're ready to. We're gonna do one five called Take Five. And if you're a fan of jazz, you might know the famous Dave Brubeck song. It has nothing to do with this game. Great. So when I say the number one, even if you're just watching passively and not on the screen, you are going to do this. You are going to make a giant lion face and stick your tongue out and you're going to roar. So whenever I say the number one, you're going to go, ah. Okay? So here we go. That's when we say the number one. And one. Ah, nice. Welcome in, Olga. Yes, yeah, great to see you. Okay, here we go. We're going to try that one more time. And one. Ah, great. And way to stick that tongue out. It's really scary. Very seldomly in life do we get the words of, please stick your tongue out. Okay, great. So we're going to do number two. Number two is the opposite of lion. It's a mouse. So it's a small squeaky, squeaky, squeaky sound. And your face is going to want to like, it's going to almost be like a, a singularity is going to occur at your nose, right? So your eyes, your mouth, everything's going to curl up and you're going to make a little whisker, squeaky, 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 head voice sound. That's when we say the number two. Okay. So here we go. And two. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. Back to one. Ah, two, one, ah. great. We're gonna move on to number three. I call number three, wild coyote. It's basically shake weight and you're gonna loosen your jaw and you're gonna go. Yeah, you're gonna just let that jaw go crazy and you're gonna go, little noise come out. That's whenever I say the number three. All right, here we go and three, two, one, three, two, yes, awesome. All right, Tony, way to get in here. Okay, great. And now we're gonna move to number four. Number four is look at whatever door is closest to you. So if, if you're feeling like you have any back or neck issues, it's okay to just use your eyes, but if you're able to, your full body turn towards that door whenever we say the number four. So here we go. Four, look at the door. Three. Two. Four, look at the door. Four, look at the door. One. 
two, three, four. Look at the door. Awesome. And we've gone to our last one, number five. I love that people are joining in. This is, mwah, thank you so much. Great. So Kimberly, hi. So number five is going to be arms up and uh, sort of just exhale. Yeah. So that's whenever we say the number five. Okay. So here we go. And five. Uh, four. Look at the door. One. Uh, two. Three. Four. Look at the door. Five. Look at the door. Five. 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 Give yourselves a round of applause. That was awesome. And give it up for our incredibly brave volunteers who just joined in without even knowing what it was they were doing. You're amazing. All right. You can stop your camera for now if you'd like. And I'm just going to quickly ask in the chat area, how are you feeling now? Go ahead and put in there, uh, if you wouldn't mind, how you are feeling in this moment now that we just finished take five. Yeah, Kim, you totally rocked it. So go ahead, check in with yourself. What is What are you feeling like now? Alfonso, thank you. Giddy. What else? Still anxious, but now a bit excited too. Oh, yeah, anxious and excited, like related, deeply related. My dog thinks I'm crazy, but it was fun. <laughs> Great. Tony's a bit more relaxed. Fabulous, fabulous. Awesome. So take five is just a simple warm up that we do in improv that helps us to sort of get away from these judging parts of our brain, right? And for those of you who join on the camera, I bet you you were trying, you were looking at yourself, you were kind of judging yourself in that moment. But when we got to sort of like a little bit more of that flow state by the end, where I was just calling all those numbers out, I think you were just engaged in it and you weren't worried about what you looked like. You were just going for it. So if that sounds true, thank you, Heather. Yep, we're getting the yeps. Um, and, and that's exactly the map of what it is we're trying to do with mental fitness. We're trying to use parts of our brain that are more capable of being creative and less judgmental. So I'll talk a little bit more. Yes, Olga, there was definitely a, a wardrobe malfunction moment that happened during Wiley Coyote for you. <laughs> Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get out of these different parts of our brain that are mostly fear-based and they are deeply rooted in our amygdala, which is great and totally useful for, for humanity and for humans, but not always, right? It's nice to have a choice to say, you know what, fear center, I don't need to go there. So that's what we're going to be working on a little bit more today, something called your prefrontal lateral cortex. So your lateral prefrontal cortex, this is your flow state. And then your dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, a little bit further back, that's your judging brain. That's like the part of your brain that's like a, an angry puppet, right? Like for some of us, it sounds like our parents <laughs> or, or a teacher that was particularly hard on us. You know, it's usually like, ah, oh, why did you wear that shirt today? Everyone's totally looking at your nipples. Uh, or, oh my gosh, I can't believe you took uh, this route to work. You're stuck in traffic because you judged poorly, right? So these are that sort of part of our brain that's like constantly, uh, and for me, often there's this core one, which is like, you're no one's going to ever really love you, you know, underneath all of it, right, is, is usually that sort of like soft, big voice that we don't want to hear. Um, so, so take five is just one of the exercises that we do to try to get more towards our flow state. And I want to talk a little bit more about this other part of it, which is something called hip hop. So let me get back to my shared screen and ask y'all who knows where hip hop started? Anyone have a, uh, a concept or a hint of where hip hop started? And you just put it in the chat field. NYC, specifically, Megan, thank you so much. The Bronx. Yes, that is absolutely right. If it wasn't for the Bronx, this rap shit probably will be never going on. So tell me where you from. Uptown, baby. Uh, yes, absolutely. African-American roots. This is a black art form that was started in the Bronx. A lot of people pinpointed it to Cool Herc and Cool Herc. So Cool Herc put together a party on August 11th, 1973. We are coming up to the anniversary uh, at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx. Uh, and it was sort of a beautiful moment for them and everyone in the neighborhood to listen to breakbeats. 
So breakbeats are those moments when it is sort of the like part of the song where it's just sort of the music happening, right? It's no, there's no, nobody talking over it. Yeah, breaking, come on now. And so the breakbeats created a moment that was looped over and over again. And it was made possible by these two turntables where you could sample the same exact moment from that song and then turn it back while the other album was going with that moment of the song. So, dun, 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 right? So that's the breakbeats. And over the breakbeats, you had this incredible, oh my gosh, Nina's aunt was in Breakin' 2, Electric Boogaloo, seminal moment, movie for me, for sure. Um, so, so yes, this what a room we have today. So those breakbeat moments also had this Caribbean concept of toasting, right? So there's this great Caribbean uh, tradition of like, oh, we're at this party, let me shout everybody out who's here. So Coke LaRoque at the party, that party would be like, and Cool Herc is in the house. Give it up for Cool Herc is in the house. He just sort of did it in tempo with the beat that was coming up. Now, it wasn't always possible to have electricity to plug those turntables in. So people also had to do this thing with their instrument, their own body. And that is where beatboxing was born. And you got people like Dougie Fresh, uh, Buffy Robinson, Biz Markey. These geniuses were able to take the art form of the, the scratching and the turntables and the breakbeats and then make it with just their mouths. And so we are gonna do that right now. We are going to be the rhythm together. So if you don't mind, I would love to have some more people come back in. So please, in this moment, we are gonna do something very simple where we're gonna be the rhythm together. And I'd love to have another five or six people join me on this one so that you can see that it's okay to fail. That is why we're bringing people up because it's not gonna be right away. It's gonna be hard. So let's put up the more volunteers. So there should be another little, again, go ahead and click up there on the share video and audio. And we're gonna go through this very simple step-by-step -step process to learn how to beatbox. Who would like to join on camera to do that in front of others, which feels super scary and like a little bit unnerving, right? Yeah, exactly. This is that moment where you're like, I don't know if I should do this. Yes, come on. This is amazing. Thank you, Willa. Breaking it. Let's go. All right. Yes, Megan. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Who else is in? Who else is in? Get in here. Whoever else wants to get in. And we're going to be going as we sort of jump back in. Yes. And if you volunteered before, that's fine. Get back in here. Great, come on in. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Allison. Nice. <laughs> uh, and if you want to, Allison, hey. And if you want to mute uh, yourself, that's totally fine for now. And we'll sort of mute and unmute kind of a thing. All right, here we go, everybody. So, beatboxing. We're gonna just quickly talk about this concept of bars and number of beats. So, when you first start out, you typically have four beats per measure, right? And so, uh, boom, 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 boom. That would be one bar. That's what a lot of people refer to dropping bars, right? So, yes, Kimberly, you have a question. No, no, no. I'm just trying to do what you're doing. Oh, nice, nice, great. So, we got one, two, three, four. We're just sort of talking about the beats right now. And now we're going to be able to fill those beats in with these different noises. So, the first noise we're going to make is the word boots. So, let's all say boots together on the count of three. One, two, three boots great and now do me a favor and really focus on the b part everyone it's a plosive right so you want to lean into it and you want to boots you want it to explode yeah boots and cats cats you know what's coming so here we go on the count of three we're going to make it a boots sound ready one two three boots yes great and let's try that again one two three boots. <laughs> Nice. And now drop out the O's. We don't need the O's. Yeah, we just need the So here we go. We're going to make those two distinct noises. And it's going to sound like Here we go. One, two, three, four. Great. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four.
great. And now let's focus on this, the part. Yeah. So this is your embouchure. It's, it's embouchure is the expression of tension in your lip, especially when you play a mouthpiece. So if we have loose lips, it's that low bass, right? It's like those Atlanta 808s going by, right? So we're going to have that nice trill, like a low frequency, which means a wide sinusoidal curve. So here we go. Let's just try the all together. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, horse lips, right? Great. And now let's do the opposite where we hold it nice and tight, have tension here in our lip, and it's going to be almost like we're throwing a dart right from between our lips. So it's a much tighter, much more taut upper lip. And instead of being, it's a, here we go, just on the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Great. And now let's unmute ourselves and we're going to oscillate between the two. We're going to go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Uh-huh. 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 Yes. Yes. Now, does anybody out there, anybody out there know what those noises are in the drum kit? What are we, what are we working with right now? Anybody know what we're working with? Bass drum. Yeah, bass drum. And even the, still the bass drum, it's just coming out of like a tiny speaker, right? It's just like, oh, I'm listening to that same song, but instead of in my car on my phone. So, right, you have all of those new little tools to, to make your own song, to make your own music. But we're gonna add in our next word, which is cats, right? So the word cats, like, oh no, I'm chasing this cat. Here we go on the count of three, we're gonna say the word cats. One, two, three, cats. One, two, three, cats. Great, and now we're gonna take the A out, just like we did the O's from Boots, and it's gonna be so here we go with the all together. One, two, three. Again. Again. Good. That C, that C is a soft palate noise. Imagine your mouth's like a cave and it is coming up from your voice box and it is ricocheting off of the middle stalactite of the cave of your mouth and then coming back out the front between your teeth. Right? So we're gonna focus a bit more on that. Anyone know what part of the drum that is? Where's, what's the, where's that coming from? The symbol. Close, the the TS at the end of boots and the TS at the end of cats is the hi-hat. Olga got it, the snare. Yeah, it's like a rim shot. It's sort of us using the side of the snare with a hitting the side of it. So here we go, we're gonna go maybe four or five times. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Great, let's take ourselves off mute and we're gonna try that together, y'all ready? And it's gonna be a slightly different rhythm. I'm not gonna just do that same one again because you just did it. You ready, here we go, follow me. One, two, three, four. Yes, give it up for yourselves. We're mastering the snare. Okay, awesome. So here we go, here we go, here we go. We're gonna put those together and it's gonna sound like this. Boots and cats and boots and cats and. You ready for it? One, two, three, four. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and All right, great. I'm gonna change the rhythm up. So everyone at home, you should be playing along too, all right? So here we go. It's gonna sound like this. Great. 
great, let's change up the rhythm. We're gonna do more like bachata, right? Like think of those like Caribbean island. We're gonna do a Yes. Okay, now unmute yourselves team on screen and we're gonna do the hardest one, which is a totally new time signature called six eight. And it's gonna make you freak out, but it's okay. You have all the skills you need. Oh gosh, Megan, somebody almost tried to come in on you. All right, here we go. So it's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound boots it's and cats it's and boots it's and cats it's and boots it's and cats it's and boots it's and Yes. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourself a round of applause. Kimberly, it shouldn't be easy. This is supposed to be hard. And you're probably also feeling all kinds of things right now. Like, is there a lag? Am I doing it right? Who's judging me? I'm judging me. Are they judging me? There's a lot going on. Yes, it's really, really good stuff. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome job, my boots and catchers. Everyone in the chat, give some love to these brave souls here. Tony, Megan, Willa, Alyssa, Kimberly, you did great. Allison, sorry. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now that we have got sort of that down, we're going to try the next level of this, okay? So if you want to turn off your cameras or if you want to jump back in the main room, totally cool. We're going to do something called floating tone. All right. So just take a nice deep breath and just going to hold a note. It can be any note you want. Right. So we're going to just hold a note together on the count of three. One, two, three. Hmm. Great. Just holding that note. Right. Hmm. And now we're going to add the boots and cuts on top of us while we hold that note. Okay, so here we go, holding the note. Hmm, boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Right? We're just holding the note as we make the noise. Now I'm going to do what's called a pentatonic scale. So we're going to start out at one note, then we're going to jump to the third, and then we're going to jump to the fifth, and we're going to go back down to the one. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. It's totally fine. Just try to follow along generally with me as I float tone and beatbox. Okay, here we go. Huh, who, three, four. Boots and cats and 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 boom. Yes. So that was boom, 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 boom. Right? We were going back down five notes, but we started at the first note and then we skipped the second, went to the third, skipped the fourth, and went to the fifth. And that is just a simple, easy way to kind of create a nice rhythm with a little bit of a sound going to it. And I wanted you to get some sound beyond just the percussiveness of the drums because we're gonna do another exercise. But before we do that next exercise, take a moment, take a nice deep breath, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, and go ahead in the chat field and let me know how that was for you. What was that like? What did you experience? You can talk about feelings, you can talk about anything that was difficult, or you can talk about the thing that you thought you were really good at. What were you successful at? So go ahead in the chat field, just let me know what was that like for you? What did you feel? Tongue tying. Yeah. I didn't know I could do that. Oh, I love that. Great one. What else? How did it feel? Ooh, electricity. Yes. Soothing. Oh, okay. Love it. Energizing. Thank you, Allison. What else? And also, please, I love the tongue tying ones. Like the things that are hard too, please feel free. If, if that's not your experience, what other people are going through, don't feel like you have to be the fish that's swimming in the school. We need those outliers. We need people who are exploring new parts of the coral that we didn't even know were there. So if that's not what it was like for you, it's totally okay. 
Makes me want to drum set. Yes, I'll go. Oh. Great. Um, wonderful. Well, well, thank you for sharing those thoughts, those feelings with me. Um, it's awesome. Bring back memory as a collegiate acapella in my 15 year old. Yes, kids are going to freak out for this. So let me tell you a little bit also about what's happening in the neuroscience of it all as well. So syncopation and beats, that is the first thing that we hear inside of the womb. It is a resonance of the heart and the skeleton of our mother that is conducting the sound of voices and most importantly, that heartbeat. So as a baby inside of the womb, we are aware of whether we have the ability to hear or not that heartbeat through vibrations and this sort of sense of sound that surrounds us. Now that is incredibly important because it's a part of our reptilian brain. It's in the deep mode network of who we are. It also gets corely set into the this gorgeous part, the cerebellum. So this is sort of like responsible for a lot of our motor actions and like also pulmonary and respiratory system, but it, it is so deeply entrenched in us that it's a part of every layer of our brain. So we have got the reptilian layer, and then we've got sort of this other layer here in the core motor fun function, which makes us mammals. But then more importantly, it also resonates in our prefrontal cortex. And that is the area that makes us humans or homo sapiens. And so we're now resonating in syncopation with all of that beautiful, like, from the core of when we turned into a single cell organism into a homo sapien. And it resonates with us and creates this mesh network. So if you were in a room with other people while you're making this, and even for us in this sort of video context, as long as you could hear that, and maybe you were bobbing up and down, we're starting to syncopate our hearts together. And when you syncopate your hearts together, you are allowing yourself to be a bit more vulnerable and open to new perspectives and ideas and change. So having these little core moments inside of the way we play that allow us to syncopate is huge. So when we're creating you know, change through play, beats tend to be for us, especially at FLS Plus, a huge component of how we create most of our curriculum, most of our interactive experiences, and where we're trying to get to at the end of the day, which is helping people to, to be more musical. Any thoughts or questions about that very big subject matter that I just stuck my toe into? Because um, I want to create time here for, you know, voices, thoughts, and feel free to pop in by clicking on the share audio and video if you want to have your voice uh, seen and heard, or go ahead and put it into the chat. Absolutely happy while these little debriefing moments are going on to, to take questions or, or thoughts or ideas. <clears throat> it was a lot. Um, okay, so with that said, we're gonna jump into our next exercise. And our next exercise is gonna be hard. And for that reason, I'm gonna put you into little breakout groups. So you're gonna be sort of randomly assigned to a group of about four or five people. And inside of that group, you are gonna make a beat together because you now all know how to do that. So you're just gonna create a nice simple boots and cats and boots and cats, however you wanna do that. Somebody just be brave and be like, oh, you know what, actually, I, I will tell you how it's gonna happen. Whoever's birthday is next. So whoever has the birthday that's coming up next, you will help the group by starting the beat in your small breakout, okay? Now, when that beat happens, someone brave is going to do what's called a gibberish solo. What does that mean? So gibberish, right? It's just made up sounds. It is what kids and babies do when they're first acquiring language. They are just getting the prosody of it. They're, that's the sing song nature of how we communicate. So you're gonna do a gibberish solo. It's totally minions. Yeah, minions use a mashup of all languages. There's a lot of um, modified Malaysian inside of minions, by the way. I don't know, Pisa Bachara Bahasa Indonesia. But there's a lot of that inside of the minion talk. Uh, so, so with that said, you are going to find your relationship to the beat and then gibberish solo for four bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, 
four, and four, two, three, four, which goes on for a long time. And you're probably already freaking out. And you're like, four bars of soloing, I want to die. Awesome. That's exactly how you should be feeling, right? This should be vulnerable. This should be difficult. You should not know what's going to happen in bar three and four. Maybe you're already starting to plan bar one and two. Do your best not to. It's okay. You're full. You're an amazing human. You'll figure it out when we get there. So first and foremost, I want to give you a quick example of this by using an MC that maybe mo some people know. Uh, so go ahead and in the chat field, put down like someone who you love listening to. It can be a singer songwriter. It can be a rapper. It can be a jazz soloist, whoever you want to go ahead in the chat field and put someone in there that you love listening to. Like who is someone that you're like, yeah, that person is incredible. I love the way they rap. Oh, Baba. Oh my gosh. And there's a lot of the neuroscience that Baba talks about inside of this as well. Who else? Anybody else have someone that they're just a big fan of that they love listening to in the rap world or in the music world? Okay, Nikki, let's go. Anyone else? Anything else in there? Go ahead and just put it in the chat field if you're feeling up to it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, too many, too many. I, I get it, right? So like, all right, then, then let me just do it this way. So <clears throat> Eminem right? Some people know Eminem. Hopefully a lot of people know Eminem. If we were to strip away all of the words from Eminem and just do the sort of gibberish sound of Eminem, it might sound like right? It's taking away the words, but still going with that flow, that essence of Eminem. A lot of internal rhymes, a lot of sort of let's call it staccato drum almost style of rapping and you have someone like snoop right who is like super laid back right so these are just the essence of that person if you were to take all their words away that's what we're going after okay so adam if you don't mind let's put everybody into a breakout room yep rap muppets totally and the person whose birthday is next will start the beat. And then everyone in that group will do a gibberish solo for four bars. Now, here's the most important part. After someone goes, you must freak out and give them all the props and love in the world. You must applaud for them. You must scream their name. You must say they did the best job ever because they're doing something really scary. Okay, great. Let's do the breakouts. Have fun. Enjoy. I'll see you back here shortly.